Hello and welcome back. Now I've kept quite a lot of detail in this one just because I thought it might be handy if anyone's looking at doing this in the future. I've picked these calipers up off eBay, originally from a 2002 R6, but unfortunately they look like they'd spent a bit of time at the bottom of the sea. So a complete strip down and rebuild was required. I unscrewed the bore caps using a rag to protect them as best I could. They were quite clean inside, which was promising. As these calipers don't split, I picked up a piston puller tool from Amazon to help me free the inside pistons. They expand to fit the bore of the piston, then you can pull them out. It has a slide hammer too, which you can use if they're really stubborn, but these came out with a good twist and tug. Then I changed to the larger size for the bigger piston. Then did it all again for the other caliper. Now this tool wasn't very expensive and it made quite light work of the task in hand, so I'll put a link in the description in case you're interested. The pistons look pretty corroded, but optimistically I gave everything a short blast in the ultrasonic tank so I could see exactly what I was dealing with. Now they cleaned up okay, but the corrosion on the pistons was pretty bad. They may have been salvageable, but I really didn't want to be back here again in three months time after they'd lacerated the new seals, so I ordered a new set. Now while I waited for them to arrive, and before I sent the calipers away for Cerakoting, I needed them for a slight modification to the fork legs. Now as you know, I've got the 94 model FZR, which means the forks have a slightly different design to the older models. Excuse my crude drawing here, but hopefully this illustrates my point. If I simply swap the six pots for the blue spots, they foul slightly on the fork leg. So in order to get them to fit, I need to remove just enough of the fork leg for the calipers to clear it. Now this isn't the case for any other Model FZR, just the later ones. It's interesting to see that the bracing structure on the back of the strut follows the exact contours I need to match to clear the caliper, which looks rather similar to the fork bottoms of the first R1s, which were only a few years away at this point. It also gave me the confidence that it would still be more than strong enough after the modification. I made sure to check their fitment every few minutes to get the shape right. A final check and I was happy with the small air gap to allow any expansion with heat. A quick smooth over and they were ready for primer and three coats of satin black. Now it's a step away from stock to go with black, but then again, so are the blue spots. Very happy with that. Next up was an oil change for the forks. I poured the old oil out. And checked the spring length was in spec. Then I poured fresh oil in. Bleeding it through the damper rod. then check the air gap before putting them back together. And now the calipers are back with fresh Cerakote. Thanks so much to Lewis at Stopping Power UK for an amazing job. I've also got a shiny new piston and seal kit.
I put a good amount of rubber grease in the seal grooves, then fitted the new main seals and dust seals. I fed the new pistons in and pushed them into the board. fitted a new bleed nipple and boot. And then repeated it all for the other caliper. I fitted new Brenta Sintered brake pads. Then fitted the spring plates with new pad pins and R clips. My bore caps came back from the anodizers. I went for a slightly lighter colour than the standard blue, just to make them a little bit different. They went back on to complete the fully refurbished calipers. And there was no way I was putting those rusty old lines back on them, so I got a new set from Hell and cleaned up the brackets, ready to go back on. But before I could fit all that together, I needed to rebuild the front end. I reassembled the clip-ons, which I've given a clean up and some fresh paint. Then gave them a quick test to make sure they were working properly. Okay. I fitted them to the top yoke and began to refit the forks. Then I started to fit the switch gear and hand controls. I 
found another tape abomination on the horn circuit, so I got rid of that and cleaned it all up. I fitted the R6 master cylinder, which I'd given a clean up and fresh grease. But I noticed a nasty crack in the lever hinge, which I didn't fancy trusting my life to, so I chucked that in the bin and ordered a new lever. In the meantime, I replaced the internals with a new piston kit. Now, it's time to steal the wife's hairspray. This is my favorite method for this job. It helps the grip slip on nice and easily and then acts as an adhesive when it dries. I fitted the new grips and put the bar end weights back on, which had been treated to a fresh coat of paint. I'd had the mudguard mounting hardware in some evaporust overnight. Then I replaced the bolts with new stainless ones and refitted the mudguard. I put the spacer and speedo drive in, which in hindsight could have done with a spot of paint too. Then it was time to get the front wheel complete with fresh rubber back into the bike. Once in, I did the same for the rear wheel. Then I refitted the rear brake for what felt like the 10th time on this project. I had to make a slight adjustment to the angle of the reservoir hose on the master cylinder. This was just a case of removing the boot, then undoing the circlip, which allowed me to twist it round.
finally it was time to see it all come together up front. They went on a dream, although the neighbour's cat wasn't that impressed. Do you want to see my new brakes? Oh. There. What do you think of that? Very happy. I started to assemble the new lines, feeding them through the brackets and up to the master cylinder. I'm only doing these up loosely for now, as I want to be able to adjust the angles as necessary as the front end comes together. So that's the blue spot conversion done, and despite how I made it look, it's not very complicated at all, especially if you don't have to rebuild the calipers entirely. And if you're looking at doing this, I'd really recommend the guidance pages on xap1000.co.uk. It's got all the info about which calipers to get, as well as some other improvements you can make to the bike. Anyway, we're nearly there. That's kind of all the big stuff done. The next video will most likely be a lot of reassembly and other little jobs I see along the way. I'll see you then, bye.